Es ist unglaublich schwer, sauer auf Tom zu sein. Wenn der anfängt zu lachen, kann ich einfach nicht ernst bleiben. Das verrückte Lachen hat er von Mama. Und die gesunden Zähne hat er von der AOK Rheinland-Pfalz-Saarland. Wechselt jetzt in die familienstarke Kasse und sichert euch noch mehr gesunde Extras über 1700 Euro jährlich. Zum Beispiel 100 Euro mit dem AOK Zahnkonto. AOK Gesundheit erleben. Jetzt mehr erfahren auf gerngesund.de. Today on CityCast DC, pretty much everyone in DC is obsessed with finding a good place to live, including Jamie Manning, the creator behind the popular Instagram and newsletter Exposed Brick. She chatted with us in March to share her tips and tricks for navigating DC's rental market. Oh, and after the interview, executive producer Priyanka Tilbey will be joining us for a conversation sponsored by Children's National about the nonprofit hospital's fundraising campaign this holiday season. So stick around to learn more. It's Thursday, December 28th. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. I'm here with Jamie Manning, founder of Exposed Brick. Jamie, I have seen some wild things in the D.C. rental market. I've seen back alleys listed as patios or closets being sold as extra bedrooms. What are some of the most ridiculous listings you've seen in the area? Yeah, no, I definitely think over the years of studying the market, definitions have definitely become much looser in terms of what qualifies as a bedroom, what qualifies as outdoor space. A new trend that I've started seeing a little bit more of is that developers or real estate agents marketing apartments with bedrooms that don't have windows. Ooh. And I'm just like, I don't know if I could do that, but I guess some people do. <laughs> yeah. Pretty grim to be like, oh, you've got this lovely view of a plaster wall. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> what kind of feedback do you get on the listings that you post in your newsletter and, and on Instagram and on the website? Actually, I posted a condo that was for sale and it's a one bedroom condo, but it's technically a loft. So like the bedroom space is completely open to the area downstairs. So there was some feedback on that one being like, is this really a one bedroom? Like, can you call it this? But I feel like lofts like have always gotten away with that. They've always been able to say, oh, it's a one bedroom, even though it's completely open. Also in the city, I feel like a loft has a better connotation than mm -hmm. a studio, like, oh, one big open space. If it's a loft, it maybe can get away with sounding kind of cool or artsy yes. or something. Yes. Yeah. And there aren't a lot of true loft spaces in D.C. Like, I feel like in New York, they're a lot more popular, but it's hard to find a true loft space in D.C. Do you have a favorite listing that you've posted? Of all time. Of all time. Oh, my gosh. So this one just popped into my head. There is a development on Capitol Hill, and it used to be, I believe, a school, and they've converted it into condos. And there was a unit that was like a two-bedroom, I want to say maybe two summers ago, and I still think about it. So that is one that I still think about all the time, which is weird. So that was the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, what about it, like, sticks in your mind? It had so much exposed brick. Ooh, yes. First of all, good branding. Wait, yes. Put the yes. name in there. Yes. Yes. I, I'm a sucker for exposed brick. It, it just elevates any space. Yes. And it had just like beautiful tall ceilings, huge windows, like a really cool, just open layout. And so I still think about that unit. So the rental market in DC and, and the buying market in DC mm -hmm. is wild. It's like notorious for being wild. Personally, I've looked into buying or moving into a nicer place. And every time I do, I'm like, actually, I'm fine in my no frills, inexpensive apartment. Yes. What do you think makes D.C.'s rental market different from other cities or D.C.'s market in general, not just renting, just like the housing market in general? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's funny, like I'm so hyper focused on D.C. that sometimes it's hard for me to make comparisons because people will say like, oh, like how does this differ from like Virginia or Maryland? And to be honest, I have no idea. Like I have no idea what rents are like are in Virginia, what they're like in Maryland. Obviously, like I know that I think New York and San Francisco, they're on only other two like metropolitan areas that surpass D.C. in terms of how expensive things are. But yeah, D.C., I think, is also particularly interesting just because there's always so much turnover, you know, with like the administration changing and members coming and going from the Hill. I feel like there's 
always a lot of movement and a lot of movement at the same time. You know, it's like when an administration ends, it's like a whole swath of people are looking to move. So it's just interesting that there are those, it's like truly very cyclical in that sense. Do you have any tips for folks who are looking at renting a new place or maybe even buying a place? Like, what do we need to know about this wild housing market that is DC? Yeah, so I can kind of walk you through how I've found every apartment that I've lived in, um, which I think will actually surprise people. I was the queen of Craigslist, self-proclaimed queen of Craigslist for a while, where I always looked at Craigslist trying to find an apartment. And that since changed. I don't go on Craigslist as much. I mostly go on Zillow. And the point in me going on those sites is more to highlight diamonds in the rough or places that would be harder to find because they're usually, you know, condos owned by an individual landlord and they're marketing the properties themselves. So they don't have the huge marketing budgets that, you know, a big apartment building owned by a corporation would have. So I really like highlighting those types of properties, but I've never lived in one of those properties. I've never moved into a Craigslist gem that I found on my own. In terms of renting, I've always lived in big buildings, which I think would surprise a lot of people because I love the small sort of charming old buildings. But I did live in a large, charming building. But so the way that I've always found in apartments is first really honing in on neighborhood. I think that a lot of people get overwhelmed when they're like, oh, like maybe I want to live in Shaw. Maybe I want to be downtown, but I don't know. Noma sounds nice too. And then you just ended up, you end up with so much information. So I think the first step is definitely just to go ahead and really pick a tight radius for where you want to be. And then simply Googling buildings in the neighborhood. And, you know, some neighborhoods will have 20 plus buildings and looking at each of those websites one by one, which, you know, wouldn't take that long and really honing in on what building you like and then touring and seeing who has vacancies. Because I think the risk that you run, unless you really, really know the market, if you are like trying to do something through Zillow or Craigslist is that you're less likely to figure out if something's a scam or not. You know, there's a lot of things that are too good to be true. And I think if it looks too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. So that's something just to keep in mind. Yeah, when I was looking for a place, so many of, especially on Craigslist, what's funny that you mentioned that specifically, so Mm -hmm. many of the listings, I would like scroll every day and I would start to be like, this image is being reused. Like they can't have the same exact image in a one bedroom in Shaw And also a one bedroom in Columbia Heights, like something fishy is going on. Yes. No. And I'm glad that you mentioned looking every day because I think that's really the key too. Because when I go through the market weekly to do my like rental drops and then my roundup of the 10 best places for sale, everyone is like, oh my gosh, that must be so overwhelming. Like, how do you even go through it? But it's because I go through it on a weekly basis. And when I'm on Zillow looking at rentals, I make sure to put the filter on where it's only new properties, like properties that have been listed within the last seven days, because I think that that helps minimize the amount of places you have to look at. And if there's a place that's been on the market for, you know, more than seven days, sometimes you have to think about, okay, like what's wrong with it? Or is it a place like you mentioned that's just been reposted a bunch of times? So that filter of limiting the inventory to just seven days has really helped me. Kids deserve to be kids, even in the hospital. That's why Children's National Hospital needs your help to bring joy and holiday magic to their young patients. When you donate to Children's National, you make compassionate, kid-friendly care possible. As a nonprofit hospital, donations make a big difference to provide services insurance doesn't cover, like art, music, and pet therapy. Thanks to Ace Hardware and an anonymous donor, gifts this week are matched dollar for dollar up to $70,000. The match expires on December 31st at midnight, Don't miss this chance to double your impact for kids. Make your tax-deductible gift now to make the new year brighter for kids in our community. Show you care. Give today at childrensnational.org slash give. That's childrensnational.org slash give. Wishing you happy holidays and a healthy new year. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels. 
Guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance. Deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. Yeah, I spend a lot of my free time daily scrolling Zillow, kind of planning these fantasy lives for myself that I will never have. Like, oh, yeah, like I'll do my laundry in this in-unit laundry machine here. Like, yes. do you have any tips for first-time home buyers who maybe are looking for a diamond in the rough or maybe are feeling overwhelmed about how to even get started in the process of ownership? Yeah, no, and it is a super overwhelming process. And like, it's frustrating to me that there aren't that many good resources out there and that it seems, you know, challenging to tackle. I guess I would say like not to be afraid to have a conversation with an agent or a lender, because at the end of the day, like their job is to educate clients and walk you through the process. When I went through the process myself, um, I have my real estate license. So it's like, I got kind of knew what I was doing because of that. But really, it's not as overwhelming as you think once you really break down the steps and really understand sort of the contracting process, what sort of contingencies you have in place to protect you, which now, you know, that wasn't really an option a year ago because things were so competitive and everyone was waiving contingencies like crazy. But right now, it's less competitive and you have the opportunity to put those contingencies in. So as a first-time home buyer who might be nervous, this might be a more attractive time to buy. Because I remember, you know, I had a friend, he was one of my first friends that bought property and he was told me, you know, just write an offer. And I was like, what do you mean just write an offer? Like, you can't just write an offer. And he's like, sure you can. You can just write an offer. And if you put a contingency in, like you can back out. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I think that uh, being as educated as you can about the process and realizing that there are a lot of, you know, loopholes and ways to get in a deal and out a deal, it makes it a little bit less overwhelming. Yeah. Oh my God. Nothing kickstarts you in your ownership process than that first grown up friend who yes. buys. And then you, re- then it's like, you start looking and you're like, oh, maybe I can do this. It's a real kick in the pants. Yes, it is. It is. And also to your point, though, of like always scrolling and looking for the next thing, I'm so guilty of that as well. And that's been a really hard thing for me to balance of like being really present and enjoying my space and, you know, thinking about, okay, five years ago, I would have never dreamt of being in a space like this. And so I really need to be grateful and be in the moment. But it's so hard to always, you know, be on your phone and be like, oh, okay, I want the next thing, the next thing. It's a tough balancing act for sure. Yeah. Comparison is the thief of joy. So like, totally don't get so caught up in this imaginary life that you see on Zillow that you can't actually enjoy where you're actually at. Mm -hmm. Totally. You mentioned your frustration and the lack of, a, of accessible resources out there. Do mm-hmm. you include those kinds of resources on Exposed Brick? Yeah, I'm trying to make a more of a point of writing blog posts. It's just so funny. Like, I feel like writing a blog post is so, like, old school now. Like, I'm like, <laughs> is anyone going to read this if I write this? Um, I should probably be, like, talking on TikTok or something. But so I do have a section on my website, ExposedBrickDC.com. I have an actual blog outside of the Instagram um, and where I do have a page with resources where it's 17 questions you should ask a real estate agent or uh, like contingencies 101. I just did a post about assumable mortgages because that's been kind of a hot topic and I didn't know anything about them until very recently. What is it about real estate that drew you in? Like why is this something that you're passionate about? Yeah. So, I mean, I was definitely drawn into real estate just for the aesthetics and it's really like, I feel like it's a way for me to be creative. And I love just like looking at spaces and just like everyone else imagining myself there. And, you know, I've definitely spent way too much time on listings there where I just like plan the entire floor plan. I'm like, Oh, I would put this there, this Mm. there. And then I'm like, what am I doing? (laughs) And it was, and it's so fun to find interesting properties. And the whole reason I created the blog is because I wanted to share it. Because at first, 
when I was first real estate, realized my real estate addiction, I was sending listings to friends constantly, like friends that didn't even live in DC. And I was just like, can you believe this studio in DuPont's $1,400? Like, look how great it is. And they're like, why are you sending me this? So um, I'm glad that I have the blog and I have a little bit of an outlet to share the things that I like. But yeah, it's definitely the aesthetic, the architecture of DC. I just feel like there's so many unique spaces that are so fun to share. And I definitely like that side of it way more than the finances and doing the transactions and that sort of thing. But obviously that's an important part and a part that you have to know about too. Jamie Manning, founder of Exposed Brick. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys. This was fun. Appreciate it. And listeners, don't go anywhere. In just a second, we've got a sponsored segment by Children's National Hospital. Executive producer Priyanka Tilve is chatting with Lily O'Toole from the hospital's foundation about how you can donate this month and literally shine a light in the hospital. Hey there, Priyanka Tilve here. I'm the lead producer of CityCast DC, and I'm here today with Lily O'Toole. She's from Children's National Hospital, which is the only exclusive provider of pediatric care in Washington, D.C. And this holiday season, the nonprofit hospital is collecting donations with a truly festive element. Lily, I'm so curious. What is the deal with the Light Up Dr. Bear campaign? Sure. Thanks for having me, Priyanka. So Dr. Bear is Children's National's beloved mascot. He is by far the most popular person on staff. (laughs) So we created four-foot-tall replicas, and we've placed them around the hospital for the months of November and December. Now, every time somebody donates, no matter where they are, across the DMV, in California, in a different country, all of the bears at our hospital will light up. And it's really just a heartwarming experience for the kids and families that are spending the holidays at the hospital. Oh, I love that. Do you see people interact with the bears when they light up? I mean, I'm, it's like four foot tall, so it's it's like child sized, right? Yes, absolutely. So the really exciting part is having them at the hospital. So across the hospital, we have them in different locations. The kids and families will see them. They're able to touch them, interact with them. But I think the most special part of all is that because they light up when the donations take place, they are able to understand that the community is thinking of them and supporting them during this difficult time. That sounds really sweet. So Lily, why are donations to the hospital so important? So nearly every two minutes, a family in crisis turns to Children's National. And for so many of those families, their lives are turned upside down because their child is sick or hurt or struggling. I personally am a parent to a two and a half year old and I have another one on the way. So I can tell you that gifts to Children's National make a huge difference for kids, but also for parents too. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. What what does the money go towards? Like, what are some examples? Yeah, so three really easy examples are, one, the donations, really, they help kids find joy. Kids don't stop being kids just because they're in the hospital. So art, music, pet therapies, these are all meant to help kids smile and express themselves during really difficult moments. Donations also help us elevate child-centered care. Hospitals can obviously be really intimidating and scary for little kids, and so we provide spaces for families to stay with their patients and thoughtful touches like surgery walkthroughs using dolls. And for those kids with more extended stays, we're helping them keep up with schoolwork. Mm. And then finally, they also allow us to be present in neighborhoods across the region. When families can't pay for care or insurance won't cover a service, that can be really terrifying. And so donations really are there to ensure that kids receive all of the treatments that they need. Wow, that sounds like a lot of unique projects that this money goes towards. Is there a specific fundraising goal that you're aiming for? You know, I think overall, we're just trying to raise as much money as we can to make an impact for these kids. Really, what it comes down to is that unrestricted donations allow us to pivot and allow us to provide families with what they need when they need it most. Mm, That makes sense. So how can our listeners get involved and light up Dr. Bear? Sure. So there are three main opportunities. Please make a gift. 
light. Go to childrensnational.org slash light. No gift is too small. And of course, no gift is too large. (laughs) We have matching gift partners who will be matching donations dollar for dollar several times throughout the season, notably during Giving Tuesday and then again throughout the month of December. So now is a great time to make a gift. Mm -hmm. Your impact will be doubled and really will make a difference for those families. We're also running two sponsorship opportunities for those considering corporate or family gifts. And then listeners can join us for Bear Time Stories, where special guests read to the children's national patients to bring them smiles and sweet dreams. That content will then be on our website and social channels, and we would love for the community to tune in and be a part of this really exciting program. Finally, We have a really neat augmented reality experience where you can scan a QR code that will be posted all over the communities, and you can see Dr. Bear light up wherever you are. If you are a part of a local business and you want to put signage at your location, we would love to have you join our group of community partners. So as you can see, there are a number of ways to get involved in the campaign this year, and we're just really excited about it. Oh my gosh, yes, so many different ways. I definitely want to tune in for those spare time stories. That sounds adorable. Yes, we're really excited. It seems like a great way to engage with families and patients and just bring them a little bit more joy this holiday season. Absolutely. Lily, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Priyanka. It was wonderful speaking with you. And if you want to get involved in any of the many ways that Lily mentioned, check out childrensnational.org slash light to learn more. That link is in our show notes as well. So you can get Dr. Bear all lit up. Thanks for listening. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, tell somebody who scrolls Zillow all day. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then.